My name is Barry Dolphin. I'm from uh, southwest Louisiana, a little town of Scott, Louisiana. And uh, I'm tying a fly today called a crackleback. It's a, uh, basically it began as a trout fly, but we found it works really well for bluegill in, in south Louisiana. It's a very simple fly to tie. It's basically a glorified woolly worm. Uh, you, uh, a done hackle like this for the, the finish part. Peacock harrow for a little bit of color. The original pattern calls for what's called a goose round, I'm sorry, turkey round, and that's the big tail feather of the turkey, you cut a small section of it out and you just wrap that for the body. And they use that in white. I didn't have any, so I'm substituting a, a poly yarn, which will not soak up water and floats. So it kind of gives it a little more buoyancy. This is tied as a dry, dry fly, surface fly, and uh, if you'd want to use it as a subsurface fly, easy enough to put a little bit of lead weight onto it and let it go down. It works well as both. Um, starting the hooks, you can go from a size 10 up to as small as you want to tie. I find a 12 is a good size. It's a balanced looking fly and fairly easy and doesn't take a lot of materials or a lot of time. Um, you can use whatever brand. I'm happy to be using a Mustad 12, a 3906B, but it's not all that real important. Uh, any good quality hook would be fine. Use white thread to start with, and your standard jam knot to, uh, and you wrap all the way to the bend of the hook. Cut your excess off. I'm using a uh, one of the new gel spun uh, threads this morning, but you could use anything you like. You want something fairly small for a small fly, a 70 uh, denier or a uh, six out thread's a, a, a good choice. Um, first thing I'm going to do is tie in my yarn. I lay in a little bit on top of the hook. Start with a loose loop to get it centered, and then just tie it on down. It doesn't have to be real pretty because you're going to be wrapping other things on top of this afterwards. And run back to the bend of the hook. Let your yarn hang. I'm going to tie in three peacock harrels. Just lay them in here, and again, a loose loop to get started, and then tighten her down. And then now I'm going to tie in my hackle. And as you can see, this, this is pretty broad at the base. It's too broad, so I'm going to break it off. And then I strip away about a quarter of an inch. So lay that in. And then you want to tighten this down really well because if you don't, it'll pull free on you. And then run your thread to the eye of the hook. I put in a half hitch at that point. And now I'm going to start with my body. You don't have to have a rotary vise, but it makes life easy. And you can, if you don't have a rotary, you can just do it like this. Usually three, maybe four wraps is all it takes. Tie your thread down, or your uh, yarn down. I usually put in three wraps just to, for security. And again, I'm going to throw in another half hitch. You don't have to do this, but it makes a stronger fly, will last longer while you're fishing. Now I'm going to take my peacock harrow. Now I like to twist it together, rotate it, spin it, and it makes it stay together as a uh, one piece instead of, if you don't do that, it'll tend to, to separate on you and you'll have a gap. Peacock, oh, okay, thank you. Peacock harrow can be brittle and it can break on you very easily. If that happens, then what you can do is run your thread back to the tail, 
and wrap three or four wraps around and you just lay it forward and tie it off and that gives you a little extra strength. This is a pretty good quality Peacock Herald I'm not having a braking problem with it so I'm not taking the extra time. Clip off your, your Herald. Again another half hitch. Now I'm going to pommel my hackle. The one thing you're going to notice is when you start this, it's going to want to pull the uh, peacock harrow over to the side. So what I'll usually do is cheat a little bit and I'll start it, I'll bend it back towards me and then start my pommering. Now if you crowd your eye, if you hook too much, you can take your thumbnail and push it back to give you a little more room to put a nice knot. And you can either use your fingers or a whip finisher to uh, do your finishing knot. And I'll show you a little tool that I, I made, a friend of mine showed me this years ago. With this particular brand of a whip finisher, the metal sticks out to just a little flat piece. You take a hammer and you flatten it on both sides to where it comes to a point like this. And you take a small triangular file and you cut a groove on each side and that gives you a little razor's edge in here. And you can come in and do like that and, and cut your thread. Uh, with gel spun's a little hard to do, but regular cotton thread, you just tap it and it goes. It saves you the trouble of reaching down and getting a, a pair of scissors. Uh, at this point, I'll put a little head cement on it. Just a drop. And that's the crackleback. And that's all there is to it.